What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're finally going to move into the bolt action marksman rifles, and we're going to start it off with the SPR-208. And just keep in mind these episodes, as well as the sniper rifle episodes, they will be handled quite different compared to the rest of the guns that we've covered so far. So let's dive right into this and start it off with our one-shot kill zones. As you can see here, from 0 to 29 meters, it's going to be a one-shot kill anywhere in the upper torso, shoulders, neck, and head. Whereas in our second damage range, from 29 to 56 meters, we just lose the one-shot kill potential to the shoulder, so it's now just upper torso, neck, and head. And then finally, beyond 56 meters with this gun, you have to get a headshot if you want to get a one-shot kill. For all of these, if you hit them anywhere else in the body, it'll be a two-shot kill. It will never drop off to a three-shot kill unless you're shooting through some form of cover. After that, let's have a look at our rate of fire, which is 59 rounds per minute, and that is quite slow. But what this means for our rechamber time is this is going to take just over one second between each shot that you fire. So obviously, with it being a bolt-action gun, it is going to be quite punishing if you miss your first shot. Then, one of the most important stats for a one-shot kill precision gun in this game, this is our aim down sight time, which is 350 milliseconds with this gun. This is technically the slowest out of the one-shot kill to the body marksman rifles in the game, but this is still quite fast for a one-shot kill weapon, especially when you compare it to the actual sniper rifles, this is quite a fast aim down sight speed. And then finally for this section, let's have a look at our sprint out times, and our standard sprint out time is 270 milliseconds, and that's great, that's only really going to come into play if you're hip firing out of sprint, which is obviously not going to be the best idea most of the time. Whereas our tactical sprint out time is 390 milliseconds, and this is where I want to give you guys a nice reminder on how this works. If your sprint out time in a given situation is slower than your aim down sight time with that gun, and you end up breaking your sprint by aiming down sight, your aim down sight speed will be slowed down to match your sprint out time. So in this case with the SPR, if you're in a tactical sprint, you run into an enemy, and you want to come out of sprint aiming down sight so then you can hit your enemy precisely, Instead of the 350 millisecond aim down sight time that you would normally get, it is now going to be slowed down to 390 milliseconds to match that tactical sprint out time that you have to complete. So you really want to make sure you're not getting caught in a tactical sprint, but in the case of a standard sprint here, since our sprint out time is noticeably faster than our aim down sight time, then it won't be slowing it down at all and you will be able to sprint out and be fully aim down sight in 350 milliseconds. Next up, let's have a look at our bullet velocity. This is actually really good at 680 meters per second. Generally speaking, this shouldn't be much of an issue for you. And now let's get into our hip fire, which as we can see here, we actually have a great hip fire spread. It's tied with the SAB50 as being the best hip fire spread in the marksman rifle category. So that's great. But then again, with it being a bolt action weapon, you probably don't want to be hip firing unless you're in a desperate situation. After that, let's have a look at our idle sway, and as we can see here, there is a decent amount of sway with this gun. And generally, if you're running around and quick scoping, this isn't really going to be much of an issue, but if you are trying to pick off that long range kill, you'll probably want to hold your breath in order to pretty much eliminate that idle sway, at least for a short period of time, so you can get your shot off. And then finally, for the base stats of this gun, before we start mixing in some attachment stats, let's have a look at our movement speeds. And when it comes to our base movement speed, as well as our sprint movement speed with this gun, it's basically just average for the marksman rifles, nothing too out of the ordinary here. However, when we get to our aim walking movement speed, this is by far the slowest in the marksman rifle category, at 1.79 meters per second. And what this means is, generally speaking, you're not going to want to be strafing around corners with this gun while aiming down sight, because you're quite simply way too slow at doing that. And with that, it's now time to move into some stats that incorporate some attachments as well. And we're going to start this off with our reload time. And our reload add time with this gun is 2.07 seconds. That's pretty slow for a detachable box magazine in this game. However, it will get even slower if we use a 10 round mag at 2.23 seconds. And with a 15 round mag, it'll slow all the way down to 2.47 seconds. Next up, since aim down sight time is incredibly important with one shot kill precision weapons, I did want to show the aim down sight penalties or improvements with all of the unique attachments on this gun that have an impact on our aim down sight speed at least. Keep in mind I'm not including the more universal attachments like muzzles or optics here because that would just end up being complete information overload. But here are the attachments that are unique to the SPR-208. And as you can see here, most of the barrel attachments will add to our aim down sight time, which is unfortunate. But there is the one that will help here, that is that 12.5 inch carbon barrel. 
Then you can see a couple of our combs and one of our stock attachments will be helping with our aim down sight time. And then of course, our extended mags will be increasing the aim down sight time with this gun. And so the next thing I wanted to cover when it comes to attachments, this is the barrels and how they impact our ranges, because ranges are actually pretty important with this gun since they have such a big impact on the one shot kill zones with the gun. And as you can see here, the first two barrel attachments will very noticeably improve our range values here by 16 and 24% respectively, whereas the final three barrels will all be harming our ranges by varying degrees. I also decided to put the bullet velocity values and the increases or decreases with these barrels on the right hand side of the screen, just in case you wanted a reference for those as well. And then finally for attachment stats I wanted to cover on this gun, let's have a look at the bolts, because this is a unique attachment slot we haven't covered before in this series for Modern Warfare too at least. And with this, the first bolt will harm our rate of fire but help with our rechamber accuracy, whereas the second one very noticeably improves our rate of fire but it harms our rechamber accuracy. And just a quick little section on that since a lot of people are confused about what rechamber accuracy actually is. This is just how much your point of aim in your gun moves around as you're rechambering around, so between the shots that you fire. And I guess if you're just constantly aiming down sight and hard scoping, as people like to say, and trying to pick off enemies, this may have some negative effect on your visibility between shots and your ability to try to get your next shot lined up before it's even ready to go. But at the end of the day, for this type of a gun, this is much more geared toward a quick scoping style of play. And therefore, I think rate of fire is far more important. And I do recommend using that second bolt to get a faster fire rate and therefore faster follow up shots. And with that, we can finally move into some excellent attachment combinations. And the first one I'm going to share for you guys is the quick scoping build. This is the build with the absolute fastest aim down sight time possible at about 265 milliseconds. And you'll notice I did actually do some tuning with this particular build. I don't tune often, but if I am going for a really niche build where I want to stack heavy in one area, then I definitely will. So with this, we have the 12 and a half inch carbon barrel. That's the one that does help with our aim down sight speed. We've got the FSS OLEV laser, the ZLR T70 pad extension, the aim assist 406 comb, and then finally that FSS ST87 bolt, which is the one that gives us a faster rechamber time. And with this, you'll see I maxed out on aim down sight speed for all of the tunable attachments. And also on the stock attachment, I maxed out on idle sway just cause why not? It doesn't really hurt anything meaningful on this gun. And with all of this in mind, like I said, our aim down sight time is very, very fast for a one shot kill precision gun at 265 milliseconds. Our sprint out time is also improved at least a little bit here. And the one big downside to note with this is we are losing 14% of our damage range due to our barrel selection. So this is not the type of gun you want to be hanging back, picking people off at long range with. It's much more designed around aggressively getting around the map and quick scoping people. And if you treat it like that, and you're well practiced with quick scoping, you should be able to find a ton of success with this build. As for the next setup I wanted to share for you guys though, I wanted to introduce a bit more versatility. This one's much better suited to a more of a balance of play where you can still pick people off quite comfortably at long range, but you can also still hold your own as a quick scoping gun. This one might be good for maps with longer lines of sight, or like ground war or invasion for instance. And with this, we have the 23 and a half inch fluted barrel. This is the one that gives us the biggest damage range boost at 24%, which is excellent. We're using the Schlager Peckbox 4 laser. This is the one that doesn't have a visible laser beam while aiming down sight, but it still helps noticeably with our aim down sight speed. So it's nice there and it does support more of a hard scoping playstyle if you'd like that since enemies won't see the laser beam. We've also got the VLK4 optic on there, which just gives us some zoom and a little bit of that precision so we can pick off headshots at really long range, for instance. We once again have that ZLR T70 pad extension stock, and finally the bolt that improves our fire rate or rechamber speed. And with this one, our aim down sight speed is noticeably slower than the base at 423 milliseconds. This is still very reasonable for like a sniper rifle sort of a build, but you're just not going to be able to quick scope as effectively as the previous build that I shared with you guys. Like I said, we also have a 24% increase to our damage range, which is excellent for ensuring that we can still get those upper torso shots out to a pretty long range. And then finally, our muzzle velocity has also improved a bit here, which is nice for those longer range shots. Personally, I much prefer using the quick scoping build when it comes to this. Like if I'm gonna snipe, I'd rather use an actual sniper rifle in the game, but there's just a couple options for you guys with this gun. And with that, that is gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the SPR 208. 
As for my thoughts on this gun, well, I do think it's slightly outclassed by the SAB-50, and you guys will see that episode of Gun Guides coming within the next couple of episodes. I still think the SPR is an incredible quick scoping sort of a gun. For running around, being aggressive, and getting those really accurate one-shot kills, it's really, really good at that. And if you are somebody that's confident with quick scoping and with hitting those upper torso shots, you should be able to find a ton of success with this gun. Now, of course, that is just my opinion on the SPR, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about it in the comments down below. And also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description of the video. If you enjoyed this one, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.